Jesus and Mary, my question's about anger. Um, I know you've said a great deal already about anger. Mm -hmm. I seem to have a very, very big problems with connecting to and expressing my anger. Mm -hmm. And I remember you saying that uh, if Mary doesn't get into her anger, do you know, just <laughs> at, at, I'm quote from a DVD, something, yes. just as an example, right? If Mary doesn't get into her grief within a couple of minutes, then she knows that there's a spirit there. So she talks to the spirit and then usually she can get into the grief. So, and I also recall you saying earlier on um, in DVDs that there was a man who needed to bash for two hours a day in the morning and at night for three weeks before he could feel any grief. That's right. Yeah. And I feel that I'm not getting, I'm not getting it. That's the feedback I'm getting as well. I connect to feeling my rage as a baby and screaming and screaming with the rage and frustration and powerlessness and not being able, um, I can, and I feel that it, I can feel it coming out of my body, but then I don't connect to the grief straight away by any means. Um, so then I'm praying and sometimes later I just start crying at some delayed point. But I just feel I don't really know what to do now. Well, let, let's talk about it a bit, shall we? I think I'll get out there. I think we'll draw some things, I reckon. I think you've done amazing to get so far into a talk and not Yeah, without drawing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Um, you need to understand there's two types of anger, firstly. So, so if we're looking at anger, there's two types. There's the type that comes when others actually treat you badly. Right? And this usually occurs during our childhood. And it usually is not able to be expressed. Most of the time because our parents do not want it to be expressed. If you think about it, even if you've had it, been a parent, if your child has ever gotten angry with you or frustrated what you've done to them in order to suppress their anger, usually we do have quite strong response, don't we, to our child's anger. And most of us, when we were children, had our parents respond in the same way in the sense that we, we had this response of them wanting to shut down our anger and telling us that our anger was inappropriate. And most of us weren't allowed to experience it at the time. Now, a lot of the, unfortunately, in our childhood, a lot of the anger that we were expressing was the result of being treated unlovingly and having a feeling inside of ourselves that we were treated unlovingly. Or, so there were two primary causes. One was that there was an unloving cause uh, where we were unlovingly treated. The other one was that we were just having a tantrum. Um, in other words, that <clears throat> we were not getting what we wanted. And we learnt to use anger as a method of getting what we wanted. <clears throat> so how many of you learnt to use anger as a method to get what you want when you were little? Do you, can you remember doing that? Many of us don't remember doing that, actually. It's interesting. However, that is the main one we use as an adult as well. So I want to put an R in there for some reason. I don't know why that is. But So in other words, a tantrum is the result of us not getting what we want. So <clears throat> when we look at anger, when we're trying to work our way through anger, the question we've really got to ask ourselves is, is this kind of an anger like a childlike kind of an anger or is this the kind of anger that we're just expressing because we're not getting what we want? 
Now, for the majority of us, it's the kind of anger we're expressing because we're not getting what we want. In other words, we've learnt that when we don't get what we want, we just get angry. And, the, and usually, the people around us generally conform when we are angry with them. They will generally be afraid of our anger, and as a result, we'll end up getting at least some of what we wanted. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, on the divine way to God, on the, you know, God, the, what you call the divine love path, we are often in this phase with God. Many of us are in this phase with God right now because we do not want to, do not want to feel. That's the main reason why we're like that. So to be really sincere about anger and what's going on inside of you with regard to anger, you're going to have to work out whether you're angry because you're just not getting what you want or whether it's actually a childhood thing that happened to you that was unloving that you're getting angry about now. Does that make sense? Now, usually, if it's a childhood thing that was unloving that you're now getting angry about, very rapidly you'll get into the sadness of it. Because it's the unloving feeling that, that, that the anger is covering that gets exposed quite rapidly. But if you are just having a tantrum and it's just not, you're not getting what you want, you can go on like that for years. Having, expressing rage, just having a tantrum, expressing rage, having a tantrum and actually get nowhere with your soul at all. Because you're not looking at what you want. You're not looking at feeling the addiction. You don't want to feel that the addiction is actually something that's out of harmony with love. And you need to determine the difference. I have had some <coughs> success in having the tantrum of not getting what I want, or, or that I don't want to feel. Um, I have had some success in actually breaking into feeling only because I realized God I'm angry <laughs> and I don't want to feel and I in that open myself to the truth that I'm going to have to feel but I ha but I expressed rage and got deeper but I've spent years just having a tantrum about not wanting to feel and not dissipated that anger about that topic it's only when I've been open to new truth that that to the truth, really, that I have to be there's, willing to feel. <laughs> there's something you're afraid of here yeah. that you don't want to feel and you're using anger as a method of feeling powerful in order to not feel it. And the majority of people who are in, the ra in rage are in this space here. Very few uh, who are in rage are in that space over there where other people have actually treated them badly and they're actually feeling about the childhood reason why that seems to happen regularly in their life. Most people are in this place where it's just a big tantrum because you don't want to have to feel and you feel that God's made it all up wrong. Why should you have to feel when other people have done the damage to you? They should have to feel instead. And there's all sorts of things we come up with in that place as to why we shouldn't have to do the feeling. Does yeah. that help, Seth? Yeah. So the question you've got to ask yourself is which one is it? If it's the first one where it's related to the child, the child and it's a childlike expression of anger, then it's probably a lot of childhood frustration that's coming out. But when that comes out, it's unlikely it will come out for long periods of time, like months and months and months, without you also experiencing a lot of grief. Does that make sense? And Seth, this is where I feel you need to be careful because of you have knowledge of some events that happened in your childhood and you can sort of associate <coughs> the anger with those events. It's like a, it's a way of avoiding the fear that's underneath the tantrum. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Keep relating it to... Keep relating it to what... It's childhood, it's childhood, it's this thing when really it can just be the fear that you don't want to feel about your childhood and you're having a tantrum about it. And what I see a lot of people doing too, by choice, is that they remember something that was in their childhood and whenever they get angry, they blame their anger on that childhood event. 
but that's really the adult avoiding having a tantrum. Does that make sense? It's not actually feeling about the childhood event. It's just the adult having a tantrum about the childhood event. 